recently there was a massive Microsoft outage caused by global cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike, and it halted business for tons of retailers and major airports. You're listening to the Investing Mastermind podcast. I'm Michelle Markey. And I'm Sina Lundholt. And we're talking about the subject today because, as you know, we're an investing thinking podcast, and we're thinking about what impact this CrowdStrike outage has on its stock and also potentially the overall market or also big tech, because some of the headlines showed that big tech was being sold off on Friday, July 19, because of this problem. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And Sina, what have you heard about this CrowdStrike outage? Yeah, so I was actually travel traveling the day before, and I know a lot of people that was going to the Olympics on that day where everything went down, that you know got delayed and everything. So for me, I was interested in when the market opened, if it would be sort of the whole market that would go down and all sorts of companies be impacted, or if it was only going to be tech. So of course, CrowdStrike was heavily impacted by this, and the stock price really went down like a rock off a cliff so to say so but besides that you know i didn't really see i would say there was a, a few companies that were in red but i didn't see like it would have been interesting to see okay could we actually get into some of those wonderful businesses with this with these news yeah and it, it didn't cause such a big effect to too many others i mean some of the big tech like amazon and google went down a little bit but a lot of them were mostly unaffected, but with CrowdStrike, I think they were down something like 18% over the last week. So that was a pretty big downshift. And I mean, they're already coming off some highs of like $380 a share. And the last I checked, it was around 307 a share, but that's already double from where it was a year ago. So CrowdStrike has run up a lot. And one of my investing friends said, he got into the stock when nobody had heard of it. And now everybody knows about CrowdStrike. Like he said, even his parents know about it. So if this is the kind of company that's a household name, I don't know if it is because I don't think my parents know about it. So I don't know if I totally agree that everybody knows about CrowdStrike, but nonetheless, it's a critically important cybersecurity firm that because something was supposed to be a routine software update to enterprise, Microsoft computers went horribly wrong it caused a lot of business disruption. So imagine if you just wanted to get a burger at McDonald's, you couldn't really do that if the cash register wasn't available or you're in an airport like you were talking about and there's so many delays or outright some of your flights got canceled like across United and American Airlines. Those flights just didn't go because they cited communication problems. So imagine seeing this blue screen of death when you're trying to do your work and you have a lot of frustrated customers who are trying to just get on with their lives. And you're lucky that you didn't have to be in that mix, Sina. That was a fortuitous moment that you were not in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. We did talk about it, that it was incredibly lucky that we actually landed before that whole thing happened. But it actually happened a few hours after we landed. Mm. So that's kind of interesting how, how it all went down. But you know, recently, Michelle, we talked about how some companies, sometimes the stock price would decline and it was an opportunity to actually buy the stock. So, you know, I was looking into CrowdStrike to just see, okay, would this potentially be something that would be worth looking into? And one of the things Warren Buffett says is that in order to actually know if a company is healthy or sickly, we should look at the return on equity, ROE. So I went ahead and looked at ROE for Crowd CrowdStrike and what I saw wasn't what Warren Buffett would call a healthy business that had an ROE above average of US American companies. So for me, then that's a no-go. There could be other investing strategies. Maybe you have another investing strategy that would mean, okay, now it's time to, you know, buy this stock. My personal opinion is to stay clear. ROE just went positive after actually being negative for several years. So for me, it wouldn't be a buy at all. I wouldn't, you know, be interested in this business. And I also think that what we're going to see now after this happened, 
is that companies are going to try to actually find some different solutions. Microsoft have their own cyber development going on. So what we potentially could see is that CrowdStrike business will be decreasing as well after something like that, this happened. I actually saw an interview, just a clip of an interview with the CEO, Kurtz. So he was actually very, also very emotional and had to like take a sip of water because, you know, in the question, it's like, okay, 911 services went down, airports were impacted, flights were impacted, the whole world was impacted. You know, think about being a CEO of a company and you're responsible for all that. Whew, that's a big one. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine that was difficult for a, a company to take. Like all the people think they're working hard. You're just doing your job. It's supposed to be a routine update. And as CrowdStrike is known for, they are constantly monitoring for new threats. So the irony is that it wasn't even a cyber attack that caused this. It was just a normal run of the mill update that maybe people got a little lazy and they, you know, they messed up the code in what they thought was normal. And that, you know, people might take shortcuts, copy and paste. And then all of a sudden, the Microsoft computers that depend on this software being perfect and it passing all the expected rigors of software testing, it just somehow someone must have not really been paying as close attention as maybe they normally might. And this is when, unfortunately, things like this can happen. And it's possible, like you said, people will turn away from this product and start seeking other cybersecurity solutions that they think might be more reliable. And also there could be more fallout from this. So even though it was pretty bad that the stock fell, say 14% on Friday, it could fall even more in the coming weeks. I have no idea, but it also makes me wonder if this could be the beginning of sort of the end. Like there's been a little bit more talk about how the biggest bubble in history is about to burst. Like, even though there's always that rhetoric, but it's starting to pipe up more like we're we're maybe hopefully heading toward the end of the AI hype cycle where I know that that had pumped up a lot of stocks. And if a CEO just mentioned AI in a earnings call, it already pumped up the stock like that's been happening lately. So we're maybe seeing a little bit of the air come out of all the hype. And I'm not trying to just say that, oh, things will probably crash, but sometimes this could be a beginning of a sort of black swan event. Like we don't necessarily think of it at that moment. We're like, oh, it's probably just a temporary setback. They had this major global outage, but it's okay. They'll get back on track and everything will be fine. But that doesn't always happen. Sometimes there are more things that start developing that we didn't really foresee. Like, for example, what if companies have lawsuits with CrowdStrike and they really bring down the cash that CrowdStrike has because instead of making a profit, now CrowdStrike has to pay off insurance claims and you know all kinds of things that uh, CrowdStrike is now going to be saddled with. So this could be the beginning of a big downward trend for CrowdStrike. So that's another point when you were mentioning, Sina, earlier about, could this be a good buy? I don't know. Like Just because it went down 14% doesn't mean people just go blindly buy it you have to really do your work and try to think about what will happen here. Like, what is it going to take for CrowdStrike to get back in the good graces of companies that have depended on it? Like, what assurances can they make that this is not going to happen again? Because if you're a major business, you don't want to imagine having blue screens all over again and you have to cancel a bunch of flights if you're in an airport. Like, that just seems like a miserable situation that could have been prevented. Like that's the other thing is probably this could have been a preventable situation and someone was asleep at the wheel. Yeah, that's true. And also to your point about, you know, the, the general market, what we see right now is that the Buffett indicator is close to 200, which is also, you know, one of those metrics that everybody is like, <gasps> uh, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? It's been above 200 twice before so in 1999 and 1929 so almost 100 years ago wow so it's not common it's not common what's going on right now mm. the stock market is this high it's absolutely not it's only and 
you know, also for listeners, I don't know, maybe I should mention what happened in 1999. That was the IT bubble where stocks crashed. It was a, a internet boom and, uh, and that bubble burst. 1929 is known as the big crash of, uh, yeah, 1929. So we can't foresee the future. What's going to happen? We don't know. We can just see that what happened in history when the Buffett indicator was around where it is right now. So just to also talk about what you mentioned, Michelle, about what's going on in the market, it's probably a bit overheated these days, according to at least that indicator. So, uh, so yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, even though this call may have sounded a little bit of a down note because of what's going on with CrowdStrike and the markets could be inflated in their valuation. I mean, some of this could be a long time coming. So whether this was the black swan that broke the camel's back, I don't know. But it's something that we'll be paying attention to because some people think the market is just going to skyrocket after the Fed lowers interest rates, perhaps starting in September of 2024. But there's also the thought that Americans are more saddled with debt. They've been uh, struggling with high inflation, and this could also potentially have some sort of not really discussed weakness in the American economy with just everyday Americans pulling back on everyday things like Lululemon and Nike, like we talked about. They're not maybe buying as much clothes, and you can see a little bit of the crack. So just because uh, the market might seem overvalued, everything could be fine, and maybe we're not really worrying about it and people are saying the economy is humming or we'll see that journalists will dial back that rhetoric and be like, actually, even though in July we might have said the economy was humming, in reality, the American consumer isn't doing that great. And the reason why we're so American centric is because it just happens to be what a lot of the world economy and business cycle somewhat depends on. And if America doesn't do well, the rest of the world is probably not doing well either. So that's kind of what we're potentially looking at. So as Sina and I have tried to educate folks on is be careful, make sure you study what you're considering investing in. And like Sina said, like there's sometimes opportunities when these events happen, but you still have to be careful. So with that, we hope that our little discussion of CrowdStrike was helpful and Given summer holidays, we're a little bit having to make shorter episodes, but we're still going to do our best to try to get out episodes on Tuesdays, even though it's tempting to want to sit on the beach and just kick back and relax. But we're still here for you talking about investing and hoping that what we talk about helps you ultimately as an investor on your own journey. So with that, let's say goodbye for now. Yeah. Till next time. If you enjoyed the show and found the content informational, we would be super grateful if you would leave us a review and follow us wherever you get your podcasts so you automatically get new episodes in your feed. We publish a new show every Tuesday. The contents of the Investing Mastermind podcast are for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. None of this is investing advice. And if you need help in your personal situation, please consult with a professional.